Hello and welcome! This is the second part of the video series about XT IDE. In my last video, I've been talking about booting issues on retro PCs and how XT IDE can help to fix them. If you didn't see that video or need some abstract background information, please feel free to follow the link in the description. Just to remind you, XT IDE is a software which can be loaded into the device ROM memory area and it can help to use modern storage devices on very old x86 mainboards. Device ROM area is located between hexadecimal addresses C4x0 and E4x0, so between 768 and 896 kilobytes. Every device ROM, or also known as firmware, which is located in that area is automatically loaded during the BIOS initialization procedure, yet before the operation system, like DOS, has even started to boot. But how does that firmware come into said memory area to be seen and loaded at all? Let's take a look at some ICE extension cards first, for example this graphics card. As you can see, there is a chip on it, this bigger one. This chip is a programmable flash ROM. By the way, ROM stands for read-only memory and means it is written once and can only be read ever since. This ROM has been programmed by the manufacturer and contains the firmware, which will come into the mentioned device ROM area. These flash ROM chips look like this and usually can contain data between 8 and 64 kilobytes. Modern flash chips can contain up to multiple megabytes, but they are not suitable for the old devices. Such chips are located on different hardware. Here is one IDE controller, and here is a network controller, and here another graphics card. And here, the bias of the mainboard itself, which is also stored in the same type of flash memory. All these chips contain different device-related firmware, which is loaded into the device ROM area. XTIDE firmware could be one of them. Here have some flash chips and we want to get our XTIDE software on it. So the first question is, where to get the software we need? You can find the project behind XTIDE under xtideuniversalbios.org. Here you can find the documentation, more additional information about the principles behind the scene, description of different variants of the software, and source code, and more. To download the precompiled binaries, you have to click on the link for build instructions right above the table of different versions. There you will come to a Google archive site, which contains all the information you need to build the binaries on your own. However, we just want to download the precompiled files, so Get to your downloads and select XT IDE version 2 beta 3. Despite that it is beta, it seems to be stable for me. When downloaded the zip archive, you will find a set of bin files inside. Every one of this file is a version of XT IDE as described on the main page in the table. Like this IDE ATL.bin corresponds to a file in the archive. All the files are for different configurations, like IDE underscore xt.bin is for original 8088 xt machine. Please read more about this in the documentation, but for now we aim the most feature complete version of xt IDE software and go with the id underscore atl.bin. Okay, we have the xt IDE image files, what's next? We have to get it on a flash chip somehow, therefore we will need a flash chip itself and a programmer. First, let's select the flash chip. I have quite a lot of them, collected over the years from dead hardware and other projects I did. XT IDE images are coming with different set of features and compatibility for different CPUs. All the image files are between 8 and 12 kilobytes in size. The flash chips I have here are 8, 16, 32 and 64 kilobytes. We are going to use id underscore atl.bin image which is 12 kilobyte big, so we will need at least 16 kilobyte of flash. I will take this AM27C128, where 128 stands for the size in kilobits, which is 16 kilobyte. To program the chip, I will take my TL8662 plus USB programmer, which is super feature rich and affordable. If you don't have it, I highly recommend to get one. Beside flash programming, you can also program logic arrays and check logic ICs with it. Once in the software of the programmer, 
Load the XT IDE image file you want. In our case, it is IDE underscore ATL.bin. And since the file is only 12 kilobyte and our flash chip is 16 kilobytes, it is important to pad it with zeros. You can do this by selecting clear buffer with zeros option when loading the image file. After loading, verify that the data is padded with zeros up to the end. Now, all we have to do is to burn the data into the flash IC. I will cover the window on the flash IC to prevent it from erasing by light. And we can test it in the computer. But wait, how can we test it at all? Now, where we have it eventually, where to put this chip actually into? The best way is to order a special XT IDE card, like this one, and put it there into. This way, you will have a superb integrated solution. A custom IDE adapter with a custom XT IDE ROM on. Well, unfortunately, such a card costs you a little bit and they are always out of stock. So in the end, you will have to wait undefined amount of time to be able to buy it again or order a PCB by a manufacturer. Fortunately, you can find a lot of open source plans for this PCB. Anyway, if you decide to go with PCB, you will need time, some soldering skills and more parts to assemble it. But if you don't care about a superb integration solution, there is maybe another way to move on. If you have a normal IDE adapter already, on board or as extension card, doesn't matter, and you maybe have a network adapter like this one, you can do a poor man solution for free. Most of the network cards, even from the early times, have ability to boot from network. Therefore, an additional ROM is required, which you can insert into a socket on the network card, like this one. We can misuse this option and insert our freshly made XT IDE ROM instead. This will do the trick and our ROM will be loaded into the device ROM memory area as we want it. And here you go. As you can see, our XT IDE ROM was loaded. We can see its output and the boot sequence works now for the compact flash. That wasn't too complicated, don't you think? Well, honestly, I cheated a little bit. You can take almost any network card to use it with XT IDE. However, not all of them work without issues. To be able to use it like that, you have to keep in mind some things and prepare the network card to make it work. But this is a topic for the next part, where I would like to talk about a bit more advanced topics regarding XT IDE, like compatibility and performance issues and how to fix them. I hope this was informative for you. Please write your comments below and join me in the next part of this topic. So far, thank you and goodbye.